Hello, this is Stampy, and welcome to episode number two of How to Minecraft. In this short five episode series, I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to play Minecraft. If you already know how to play Minecraft, then these videos probably aren't for you, but you probably know someone that does need to watch these videos, <laughs> so maybe send that to them instead. But who knows, maybe you might enjoy watching it anyway. Hopefully uh, we're going to have some fun while learning uh, anyway. And so yeah, this is day number two. In the first episode, I survived my first night. I have my small little cave through here. I have a full set of tools and I have my food. And so now it's all about survival. We got the basics that we need, but this really isn't going to be enough. And the next thing I always want to do when starting a new world is getting a steady supply of food. And there's two easy ways to do that, and I'm going to show you both of them. The first one is by getting a wheat farm, and uh, you get wheat by growing it. And you need to grow it with seeds. And here we go. These are what seeds look like. And there's some more down here. And the way you get seeds is by breaking tall grass. You can see some of this grass is just taller than the others. It's not flat. Uh, if you go and break it away, uh, you have a chance of getting seeds. So if you just run around doing what I'm doing and just punching it all, uh, you will get rid of it. You can also use something called bone meal, uh, which will make the grass grow. And you get bone meal by killing skeletons. But, of course, to do that, you need to kill skeletons, and we don't need to worry about that. And as I was saying before, the googlies only spawn where it's dark, and when they come out in the day, they burn. So this zombie isn't a real threat, because he's going to be slowly burning away until he's eventually going to drop down. So I cannot worry about him for now, uh, but I can worry about uh, going and gathering up more of, these, um, uh, more of these wheat seeds. So I'm just going to go and go crazy and try and break away all of these. And uh, once I've got about, about six or seven or so, uh, that should be enough. Uh, for me to go and start doing a wheat farm and I just want to do the wheat farm uh, as close to my house as possible so that way I'm not going to be worrying about having to keep running to it. Eventually uh, you can set up a much nicer wheat farm and you can fence it off and make it look pretty uh, but for now as I said we're still just worrying about survival and so I've now got nine wheat seeds I now you need to use my stone hoe and if I get the stone hoe and use the left trigger rather than the right trigger, or the uh, the right mouse click if you're on PC, uh, I can start breaking away the, uh, the ground, and I'm kind of cultivating it and making it ready to plant seeds on. And so if I then press left trigger on it, I can start placing the wheat seeds. But you want to make sure you do this next to water. As long as it's within two blocks of water, so either right next to it or one to the side, then you'll be fine. If I did it just somewhere around here, this ground is going to start just going back to normal and then that's going to break away my wheat seed. So you want to make sure you do it right next to water. And now that these are planted, this wheat is just going to be gradually growing. If you sprint across it or jump in it, uh, you'll break away the wheat seed, so make sure you don't do that. Also, once again, if I use bone meal and place it on the wheat, it will make it grow even quicker. And something else I always like to do is put torches next to it. And putting torches next to it means that it's going to grow throughout the, the night as well, because that way it still has light, uh, even if the sun isn't out. And so I can leave that growing for now, uh, but while that's going, I can go and sort out the other easy way uh, to get lots of food. And that is by farming animals. And the easiest way to farm animals is by making a quick pen. And so I've still got quite a lot of wood, and so I'm going to use that to make some fences. So I'm going to make a new crafting table and put it down here. I'm going to go and make myself some planks. I can then make the planks into sticks and I can then make the sticks into fences and I want to get a few fences and I also want one fence gate but first I think I am going to cut down a few more trees. Uh, it's a lot easier to cut down trees now I have an actual axe. Uh, if you remember when I started uh, I was only um, I was only punching down trees with my fists which <laughs> wasn't quite as effective as using some proper tools. So I'm going to cut down uh, a few trees. Uh, luckily you don't need too much because every single block of wood uh, can be turned into four wooden planks. So you don't need too much. Oh, and also, another way of getting food is apples. Uh, it's not a very reliable way of getting food. Uh, you can see that once I cut down the tree, once there's no wood there, these leaf blocks will gradually disappear. And when they disappear, they sometimes just disappear. They sometimes disappear and dro uh, drop a sapling, and saplings can be used to grow more trees. Or they sometimes drop an apple, and uh, you can just very easily eat that. So they are quite a nice treat uh, when uh, an apple drops down. Uh, but anyway, let's go and make myself my farm. So I want to get a few more fences and one fence gate, uh, which is used to, um, you can open and close it and use it like a, a mini door. Uh, but it's in the uh, the shape of a fence. So I'm going to make a, a small pen down here. Going to go along like this. It doesn't need to be too big. I think I might need to make uh, one or two 
two more fences as well uh, just so I make this a little bit bigger and uh, what I can do is I can fill it full of animals and then I can breed the animals uh, to get an, uh, an almost endless supply of uh, meat from it so if I go along to here and then go along like that I can put my one gate in the middle this way I can open and close it to get in and out and now I just need to try and get some animals inside uh, which is actually a little bit easier than you might think and what we need to do that is more, uh, is a uh, wheat, sorry. And so different animals follow different things. If you hold wheat, then that means uh, cows will follow you, uh, as well as uh, sheep. Uh, if I hold seeds, then chicken will follow me. And if I hold carrots, uh, then pigs will follow me. And uh, seeing as I don't have any wheat yet, I want to see if I can go and find a chicken round here, and then I can go and try and guide it into the pen. I don't seem to be able to find any chickens around here though. Animals will spawn anywhere where there's grass. So if there's grass here, there's a chance of getting animals. Uh, but by the looks of things, uh, we don't have any chickens yet. So what I might do is wait until my wheat has grown, and uh, then I'm going to go and see if I can get some cows in there maybe. And uh, the way you get carrots, by the way, is by finding villagers. And uh, finding villagers is a very good way uh, of getting food very early on, uh, but you'll kind of just have to be lucky to whether you come across one or not. Uh, villages are basically places where you can see lots of houses, and there's lots of uh, people called testificates that live there, and uh, they all have farms, and always feel free uh, to steal their food if you come across it. <laughs> and so while this wheat is growing, I'm going to start defending my house a little bit more. And as I mentioned, googlies and mobs spawn anywhere where it's dark. And so what I want to do is start lighting up the area. So if I do some torches outside my house, that means I'm going to get nothing nasty spawning out there. I've already got some torches down by my wheat farm. I can put a torch down here. I can go and start putting some torches all over the area around here. And then this way, uh, there's going to be no baddies uh, spawning where it's lit up, which just means when I'm wandering around this area at night, uh, there's going to be less chance of something sneaking up at me. So I'm just going to do uh, torches all the way around here. And then I'm going to go for another little wonder uh, just to see if there are any chickens down. Down here. I remember seeing some chickens before, but I think I, I sadly uh, took them out to try and eat them, so <laughs> I can't find any uh, for now. So I guess uh, I will just wait until the wheat has grown, and uh, then I'm going to go and try and get some cows in. And uh, while that's going... Uh, I'm going to go and start trying to defend my house a little bit more. And uh, you're generally defending it uh, from two different things. You're defending it from the mobs uh, that are going to spawn and they're in the game. But also, if you're playing online, you want to try and defend it from other people. When playing Minecraft, always make sure you're playing with people that you trust and you're sure they're not going to steal things from you. If you are on a public server or in a public world on the consoles, you want to make sure that you're with people that you trust or you try and hide all of your belongings. You can put everything in a chest and hide it under the ground. Uh, but because I'm by myself, I don't need to worry about that for now. But what I can do is just dig a little pit in the front of my house and then that way uh, mobs won't be able to jump up. They can only jump up one block high and so if I dig this way a little bit then they are not going to be able to get into my house but I can because I can just go and jump up here very easily but they're not going to be able to which means I'm not going to have any zombies knocking at my front door so my house is just a little bit safer but if I was out wandering and I did die I would lose all of my things. What happens when you die is everything you were holding just gets dropped on the floor and then you have about four minutes to go and try and pick it back up. But a good way to avoid that happening altogether is to make a chest to store all your items in. And to make a chest you just need eight blocks of wooden planks and I can go make my chest and I can place it down here and I can put all of my valuables inside. So if I want to put my wheat seeds in there, I can put my old sword in, a little bit of spare food I can store in there and uh, some of these things that I don't need right now, I can just go and store in my chest and then that way if I die, I'm not going to be losing all of these things. And eventually you want to have a big storage room and you want to label your chest so it doesn't get confusing. Uh, but for now, I'm just storing all of my things in there for safekeeping. And also, another important thing is setting your spawn. Because I slept in this bed last night, this is now my spawn. So if I do die and respawn, which is basically reappearing in the world, I am going to appear right next to my bed, which is very useful and also means you don't want to get lost. One of the big problems people face very early on when playing Minecraft is getting lost. They'll go, wow, this place looks amazing. They'll go to go and explore over there and then they won't be able to find their way home. That's why lighting up your house is very important and also on the console versions having a map. 
So on consoles, you have a map immediately when you start, which is very useful because what you can do is look at it and you can see your coordinates. You see at the top of the screen, you can see the Y and the Z. I can see my house is Y73 and Z211. If I remember those numbers and always have my map on me, no matter where I go, uh, I'll be able to find my way back home by just using the map. And also just remembering a, a little bit of the terrain around you is very useful. And if, you're fe uh, if you feel like you're very prone to getting lost, just piling up a big tower or just making a, remembering an obvious tree uh, will be, be uh, very useful. And also when wandering around, possibly leaving a trail of torches behind you so you can literally go back the way you came and pick them all back up. Uh, anyway, it's starting to become night now. Uh, so I'm going to sleep. Because I've already made my house, this should be very easy. And in the morning, I'm going to start trying to make myself some armor and protecting myself. Actually, tell you what, before that, I'm going to stay up tonight and I'm going to show you how to face some googlies then. So I want to be prepared and I believe I have a little bit of leather. And so I can use that to make myself some armor. You uh, eventually want to have better armor than leather. Uh, leather isn't very good, but for now it will do okay. So I've made myself a leather helmet. And you can see there's a new bar that's appeared at the bottom of the screen, and that is my armor. At the moment, I only have half of one armor because a leather helmet isn't particularly good, <laughs> but it's better than nothing. And I'm going to go now and wander around and try and face some googlies and uh, introduce you to some of the different things you're going to be facing. So because I know it's dark, I know that they're going to be spawning any second around here. Uh, they won't spawn directly in front of you, uh, but if you wander around a little bit, you're going to see some appearing in. So here we go. This is probably the most iconic mob uh, there is in Minecraft. This is called a creeper. And they don't shoot you. They don't hit you. All they'll do is when they see you, as they try and walk close to you, then they explode. And so what you want to do is try and knock them and then run backwards. So you punch them and then run backwards and then punch them and run backwards and keep repeating this until you take them out. If you have a bow and arrow, that is the most effective way to take them out because you can fight them at range. Uh, but for now, I only have a stone sword, so this is going to have to do. And as you can see, <laughs> there are creepers all over the place and they're probably the most annoying ones uh, because if you're fighting them and you're close to something that you built, they could end up blowing it up. So you always want to make sure you're fighting them uh, away from anything that you care about. These are zombies. They're very simple. They basically run at you and when they're close to you, they hit you and take away a little bit of health. So they're very easy to take out. And uh, the other main one you're going to be dealing with are skeletons. And these ones have bows and arrows. So they all fight you at range. So you want to get as quick as, uh, as quick as you can. You want to get close to them and then just keep swinging your sword as fast as you can. And then you should be able to take them out easy enough. Uh, there's also spiders. And uh, they're a little bit different because they're able to climb walls, uh, which means that whenever you're building something, uh, you want to make sure you have a roof. Uh, otherwise, you might get spiders climbing over the walls. And uh, spiders and uh, creepers uh, both don't burn in the day. Uh, and spiders won't attack you in the day, but creepers will. So you do want to be careful. So there we go. Uh, there's an introduction to uh, four of the main mobs. There are other ones, uh, but we're not going to worry about them for now. And here we go. Here's a spider. Let's just show you what spiders are like. And they just attack you uh, in the same way that zombies do. They just try and get close to you. And they all drop different things. Uh, some are your more useful than others. A lot of the things they dropped are used for potions and brewing, uh, but we're not going to go uh, into that for now. I'm also going to take out this pig very quickly uh, so I can get a bit more spare food. Uh, because I got hurt a little bit, I want to make sure I eat, and then that's going to put my, my health fully up. But it's actually very useful uh, that I took out the uh, the the um, the skeleton uh, because I was able to get a bone from him. And I can use that to make bone meal uh, to try and make my wheat grow a little bit quicker. And then I can go and try and sort out my pen. So uh, I should have my bone on me here. Here we go. I got four bones on me and I can make all of this into bone meal. And uh, also in the morning, by the way. When you leave your house, you want to have a little look around uh, just to make sure there aren't any creepers still wandering around the place to surprise you. Because <laughs> remember, they don't burn in the day. Uh, but we seem to be safe for now. So I can go down to my wheat. And if I go and press the X button, I can bring up the crafting. And I want to go uh, to bone meal. It's in decorations and it's in dyes. So it's a little bit confusing to find. But you can see I've now got 12 pieces of bone meal. And if I go and press that on the wheat, uh, you can see it grows. And then I can just get all of my wheat instantly. And that saved me having to, to wait for it to grow again. So I'm going to do this to all of the wheat that I planted. And then all I need to do to gather it is punch it. If I just punch it, I can go and gather it all up. And you get the wheat, but you also get some seeds back which means you can go and replant these seeds and start the whole process again. And uh, it's the very easy way of doing it. There's some seeds down in the water as well I want to gather. Uh, but I can now go and plant these. And you normally get uh, more seeds than you started with as well. So you should uh, never run out. 
and wheat is useful for a bunch of different things. Uh, its main use is for making bread. Uh, you can also make other food with it, like cookies and my favourite cake. <laughs> and also it's useful for making uh, animals follow you. So first, I'm going to make some bread to show you how you do that. All you do is have your three pieces of wheat, go to the crafting table and click on it. And I now have some wheat, which I can eat a little bit later. But I'm going to go and try and get some animals into my pen. So I don't need to worry about sheep. Uh, because I don't need them for now because I can't get any uh, food from them. Uh, so what I really want are cows. Cows. So I'm going to go and have a look around now and just see if I can find any cows. And here we go. We have two cows and we need two of them uh, because obviously to breed them uh, you're going to need more than one. So I got one cow following me and here's the other one as well. And I need to just try and lead them uh, to my pen. Sometimes animals can be a bit annoying and sometimes they'll be following you then they'll stop following you. But uh, these cows seem to be uh, being pretty obedient. And uh, an easy way to get them in actually is just to put a block here on the outside but not one on the inside and then are they going to follow me again? Here we go. This is them. This is when they, they lose interest on you. <laughs> you always want to make sure you keep holding the wheat. Otherwise, they have a tendency of losing interest on you. And then in this situation, just sort of keep running near them, switching to the wheat and away again. Then eventually, uh, they're going to start following you. And look, there's no one spawned in right there. And so if I just go inside now, they should jump up on the block and then get inside the pen. Hopefully, there we go. We got one in. Oh, we also got a sheep in, but that doesn't matter. He can come in. Oh, no, he jumped back out again. Right, can I get this this other cow in? Are you going to hop in? Come on, on the block. Right, I might just go outside and try and nudge this this other one in if I can. If I just go and knock him, is he gonna is he going to follow me? Here we go. Oh, he thought about it. He thought about it. Let's try this one then. Let's see if this cow is going to be more obedient. Let's just try and get him through the gate. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, and also when you're trying to get one in, uh, the others have a tendency of escaping, but I think we should be okay now. Is the cow going to come in? He's so close. He's so close. Come on, cow. Is he going to come in? Is he not going to get in? There we go. He's half in. He's half in. There we go. I've now got myself uh, an animal pen. I've got my two cows in here. Uh, there's another cow here, but sorry, too late. <laughs> and I can now breed them. And to breed them, you once again need to use wheat. If you click on them, you can see the love hearts come out. Then if I click on the other one, they go and give themselves a little kiss to each other. And then we get a little baby cow will pop out. And so that's the easiest way uh, to generate lots of uh, animals. And then that way you can get them for food or if there's a uh, sheep. You could just shear the sheep to try and get lots of wool uh, if you need to build things out of wool. And it's just very, uh, just a very useful uh, thing to do. And so now we've got ourselves our house, our, our rather secure house. Uh, we've lit up the area and we have a near endless supply of food uh, with our wheat farm and our, our pen down here full of animals. So we are set now uh, to not worry about surviving. We can worry about doing other things such as mining, crafting and building. And uh, those are the things that I'm going to be talking about in the next few episodes of How to Minecraft. So that's the end of this episode here. Hopefully you all enjoyed and learned from it. I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you all later.